Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Easy Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Furkan Dandia. Uh, this week's episode uh, is a little bit different as I'm doing my first solo episode and I wanted to do something different this year, uh, especially with Valentine's Day around the corner. I wanted to talk about uh, the relationship we have with ourselves. Uh, Last year, I released an episode about relationship goals with our partners, but this year I wanted to focus on probably the most important relationship we can ever have, and that's the one we have with ourselves because we are with ourselves all the time. So, um, and and the reason why this is important to me is because self-love is a journey I've been on um, and I've struggled with for a really, really long time, and and I still struggle with it, uh, as you can all appreciate. It's something we constantly um, navigate through, um, whether it's our own healing, the way we speak to ourselves, uh, the things we're trying to do in life, um, our goals, our values, our purpose, uh, our mental health, our physical health, our spirituality, all of it, all of it's a journey. And that's all, you know, inside of us. And it's the relationship we have with ourselves. So For this week's episode, I wanted to focus on that relationship that we have with ourselves and how we can improve it. And uh, I shared some things that have worked for me, and I'm really hoping that this will uh, start a conversation, whether you want to have that conversation with your friends, your family, your partner, um, you know, whether you're single or in a relationship, I think this is important. But I really wanted you, everyone to start thinking about it. And maybe some of the things I share might resonate for you or you might want to do things differently. But I really hope you put that time and effort into it because, uh, you know, for me, I look at it. We often get caught in this trap that we want to seek a relationship because we believe we're going to find this other person and they're going to complete us or they're going to make us happy. Um, and, and I think that's a a significant misconception. Um, our happiness should not be dependent on someone else. Uh, we should be able to choose happiness for ourselves and we should be able to do things for ourselves that make us happy. So, so what I've done is broken down, um, things into four different categories. And the first one is, um, knowing yourself. So I'll get into some of the things that I've done and I've found really helpful in order to understand myself better. The the next one is uh, physical health and some of the things I focus on under the physical health umbrella. Uh, And then the third one is mental health or emotional health. I kind of group the two together. So I'll talk about that. And then the last one is spiritual health. So, so I'll get into that as well. So going back to the first one, um, really spending the time to knowing yourself or understanding yourself, I think is crucial, um, especially, you know, if you're single, uh, but even in a relationship, you know, you, um, we have this expectation that we're, we're going to be in a relationship, we're going to get to know this person um, and, and be able to give them the, the things they need to feel whole. Uh, we also have these expectations that <clears throat> we're going to feel whole when we get into a relationship and someone's going to make us happy. And the problem I see with that mindset is immediately we're putting our own happiness into someone else's hands and we're taking the responsibility of making someone else happy. And I, I, I believe that's a, fu- a fundamental flaw. I think when two people come together, they should be happy on their own. They should be healthy, um, both physically and, and mind-wise, and, um, and be independent. And then they can come together and create happy memories together. But neither one of them is depending on the other for, for happiness or having their needs met. I think we should be able to give that to ourselves, but also have a level of awareness on how we can coexist in a relationship without it becoming toxic or codependent, but really coexist in that relationship and uh, be able to support each other, be a team, 
um, you know, uh, push each other to achieve their goals, uh, things like that. So, so under knowing yourself, I think the biggest piece to focus on is being honest with yourself. And that means uh, putting in the time and effort to doing the work. And, and, you know, we hear the term doing the work quite a bit. And when I say doing the work, I mean, you know, you're really digging deep, you're finding, um, you're finding a lot of answers where it's like, okay, what are your triggers? Uh, Where did these triggers come from? Like, what are the patterns and behaviors you have carried on from your childhood? Really spending the time to understand that gives you an idea of what are the things that even trigger you today as an adult? Where are these coming from? Because quite often, you know, when we feel triggered, we'll react and then we'll look back and we'll be like, well, wow, I really overreacted on that. And, and the reason that happens is because it's obviously bringing to surface something we haven't dealt with. And until we don't get curious and dig deep, we can't really get to the bottom of that and even heal that part of ourselves. So when I say being honest with ourselves, it's being honest about, okay, this is something I really need to work on. This is when it started. Um, And then also being honest where you're making mistakes. You know, there's, we all have this tendency to have defense mechanisms. So we'll either you know, project onto others or, uh, you know, we'll, we'll deflect so, or get, you know, defensive. So I think that requires being honest and understanding, okay, what am I bringing to the table? How are my insecurities showing up? Um, how am I being defensive and why am I being defensive? Why is this so hard for me to accept? So that's what I mean about doing the work. Um, and for me, that's also meant going for therapy, which is something I'll cover later. But that's when you get a lot of answers. And and like I said, you have to be really honest with yourself. The next thing I would like to suggest is um, understanding the agreements that you have with yourself. I recently read the book uh, Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. And I thought it was powerful, especially agreement one and four. So The four agreements are being impeccable with your word, uh, don't take things personally, don't make assumptions, and always do your best. And the reason why I think agreement one and four are so valuable, um, I mean, they're all valuable, but one and four really resonated for me is because when we're being impeccable with our word, we're being mindful of how, how we speak to ourselves and what are the things we say on a daily basis. And quite often... When we speak to ourselves, we're really harsh and we repeat that narrative over and over and over. And because we've been repeating it for so many years, we actually believe it. Those are our core beliefs. So I think just having that shift in how you speak to yourself or even asking other people, do you think I speak to myself kindly can bring a lot of awareness and when you remind yourself you're always doing your best, there's a level of compassion and grace that you give to yourself. Um, And when you do that for yourself, you're also able to give it to others. But at any given point when, you know, whether you struggle with perfectionism or um, you're really harsh with yourself, if you can remind yourself that you're always doing your best, that's the kindest thing you can do for yourself. And then when you focus on the other two agreements, don't take things personally and don't make assumptions. I think you're just laying, you're not really setting yourself up for failure. You you know, you're not making assumptions when someone does something, you're open and curious and you're willing to ask. And then even if someone is doing something by not taking it personally, you're saving yourself a lot of hurt. Um, So I, and and I fully recognize a lot of these things are easier said than done, but that's where you need to practice and and repeat these things over and over again until it becomes a habit. Um, another thing I would focus on when you're trying to understand yourself is um, try to understand your attachment style. And I 
again, this is applicable to whether you're in a relationship or you're single, but really understand your attachment style um, because it gives you a lot of insight into why you behave and react a certain way, especially when you're in relationships. And then once you understand your attachment style, at least for me, I was able to see where it started, where did it come from? Why did I have a certain attachment style? So it gave me a lot of insight into my behaviors and how I show up in relationships. So when you're able to understand your attachment style, you're able to also figure out what are the things you need when, you know, you're feeling anxious uh, or when you're in conflict in a relationship. So, so then when you are in a relationship or if you are in a relationship, you're able to communicate this, those things to your partner saying, Hey, you know, when we're in conflict, this is what I need. And I would also encourage you to understand the other attachment styles, like not, not only yours, but the other ones, because when you do get into a relationship or if you are in one, you also have insight into how your partner shows up, especially if they have an opposing attachment style, because quite often we attract the opposite attachment style. So, so then not only are you able to communicate what you need, you're also able to ask them what they need and have a better understanding. So when you're in conflict, you know how you're showing up and how the other person's showing up and you're able to resolve the conflict a lot better because you can have um, a more productive conversation. Um, And then the last piece under knowing yourself, I would really encourage everyone, if you haven't done so, um, try doing one of the personality tests because they're so insightful, Um, whether it's the Meyer Briggs or the five factor personality theory uh, test there, they can give you so much information about yourself, like, you know, whether you're introverted or extroverted, how you think, how you feel. Um, It gives you a lot of information on what type of person you are, like, I'm extroverted. So after doing the personality tests, and I've done them three or four times over the last 15 years, and it always comes out as me being extroverted, fairly borderline, but I know that I get a lot of energy when I'm around other people. Whereas if you're introverted, you probably want to have your alone time and you get exhausted when you're around people. So if you don't understand why, you know, uh, certain things are exhausting for you or going out is exhausting for you. I think knowing what your personality is and what are the, what, what the factors are can be quite insightful and it can help you understand yourself better. So again, you're able to communicate with others uh, in terms of who you are and what you need and why you need to be, you know, uh, have why you need your own space at times. Um, and then that way, if you're in a relationship, the other person's not getting offended or taking things personally. So that's kind of the knowing yourself part. Um, and then I'm going to shift gears here and I'm going to focus on physical health. And uh, one of the things I've really focused on is uh, over the last several months is, is food. And I know this sounds uh, obvious, but being really mindful of what we're um putting into our body and it all kind of goes hand in hand in physical health. Like if you're eating properly, you're exercising better and then you're sleeping better. Or if you're sleeping better, you're more productive, you're working out and you're eating better. So they all kind of reinforce each other. Um, But what I would suggest is like doing a lot more research on what type of foods are best for your blood type or your body type or culturally uh, or genetically, like try to do a little bit of research in terms of what food types work best for you. Cause there are certain things that can, um, impact your energy levels or, or just, you might feel fatigued if you're not eating the right type of food. And one of the other things I started doing was putting a lot of time and effort into the meals I was cooking for myself, just like I would for, you know, my partner or my kid, like, uh, I had this tendency of rushing through when it came time to feed myself. I would just put things together and quickly eat. 
And until I didn't make the conscious effort of preparing meals properly and putting that time and effort, um, like I noticed a significant difference when I started doing that. So that's something I would suggest. Um, and then the next piece, exercise. So one of the things I realized uh, fairly recently, especially when I started doing this podcast was, you know, I had this belief that exercise or going to the gym is a solution for everyone. If you're struggling with mental health, go go to the gym. And I started talking to more people that would come on as, uh, as guests on the podcast. And what I realized is some people actually get really anxious when they go to the gym. So I just want to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm clarifying that. But when I say exercise, it's any form of movement, whether it's even just going for a walk in nature, it could do wonders for your physical health. And I'm sure a lot of people have heard the benefits of being in nature, um, breathing in the fresh air. So what I would like to suggest is find out where you feel comfortable and great. And if that means going to the gym, perfect. But if that for you, exercise means going for a walk uh, around the block or to a nearby park um, or even going for a bike ride, I would highly recommend that. And that's something I would suggest you make time for. And then the last piece uh, under physical health is sleep. So um, I've been like really on this sleep uh, journey lately. And, and for people that know me, I've probably heard my stories many times because I've been talking about it a lot. Um, I was fortunate enough to do a podcast earlier this year um, and I released it right before New Year's that focused on sleep. And um, and, and honestly, uh, my guest, Dr. Uh, Rich, talked about how sleep is probably one of the biggest life hacks we have. And he wasn't kidding because I've adopted a lot of the things he shared in that episode. And I would highly recommend that you guys go check it out if you haven't already. Um, just focusing on getting consistent eight hours of sleep between core hours, anywhere between going to bed at 1030 or 11 and getting those eight hours in, in every day consistently. And, you know, there's going to be the occasional day where you're not going to get eight hours or you're going to go to bed later, especially on weekends. And that's fine. But like I've been targeting four to five days a week consistently, and it's made a huge difference. Like I have never felt so productive and energized. And I think the biggest piece that Dr. Rich mentioned in the uh, podcast episode was uh, around the benefits of sleep is the uh, emotional regulation we feel. And I that's been the biggest game changer for me is just I feel more regulated. Um, I don't get cranky or grumpy. Um, I just feel more in control of my mood. And because of uh, my improved sleep, I've noticed everything going well. Like I have more energy to spend, you know, the, the right amount of time to cook my meals. I have, I'm able to schedule in regular workouts and exercise and cardio. Uh, I have more time to read. Um, so I'm just, I'm finding like all of that's working well for me. So I would suggest, you know, again, if you can going back and looking at your, um, sleep patterns, and especially if you're in a relationship, try to like hold each other accountable and try to go to bed at the same time, which is always a good thing if you're in a relationship, because if you're going to bed at the same time, it's great. You're connecting and then, you know, you're waking up and you have a proper routine. So yeah, I would suggest looking into that. Um, the third category, as I had mentioned earlier, is mental health. And <clears throat> under mental health, I've, I'll start off talking about meditation. Um, that's something I've struggled with for a really long time. Uh, I especially struggled with just sitting down in stillness and trying to shut my mind off. And uh, I, I still struggle with it. I find like when I'm sitting in meditation, uh, my mind wanders. I'm thinking about all the things I have to do. I'm thinking about the things that happen during the day. Um, all kinds of stuff keeps coming uh, up. But over time, what I've been able to 
get better at is being able to come back to my breath. And, you know, a lot of people say that it's okay. If your mind wanders, just bring it back, just bring it back. And oftentimes you have to let the thoughts come to you and through you. And I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I think the problem is people have this perception around meditation that if you, if you're going to meditate, you got to shut yourself off and just be present. And while that is the goal, uh, I think we tend to uh, set ourselves up for failure when we can't achieve that. And a lot of people get discouraged and, uh, avoid meditation. And I used to do that. And I sometimes still struggle from it. So I think meditations help me in the sense of helping me calm things down, slow things down, really just focus on my breathing. And what I've been able to do now is uh, I've gotten better at breathing exercises. So again, uh, I would suggest Uh, trying meditation if you haven't and if you already do so that's great Uh, the next piece around mental health which I really focus on and and like to stress for people is um, therapy and I've been going for therapy for close to five years um, and now it's more on a as needed basis so every two or three months if something comes up and I'll try the usual steps of trying to deal with it myself. So if something comes up and I feel triggered or overwhelmed, I'll try to meditate. I'll try to journal. Um, I'll try to sort through it. And if I can't, then I know I need to go see my therapist. So, you know, that typically happens every three or four months. And if I hadn't, haven't gone in three or four months, then I'll just schedule an appointment to go just for a check-in and often you know, my therapist will give me something to think about, and then I'll have to work through that. So um, therapy has been huge for me. And everyone I know that's uh, gone consistently truly sees the value uh, themselves, and uh, have definitely uh, taken a lot out of therapy. So that's something I would suggest under mental health. The the next piece under mental health is journaling. Uh, So journaling is something, again, I have struggled with, but I'm getting better at and I find it. I don't try to force myself uh, because there's a time where I was like, okay, I have to journal every morning. But now it's like if something is bugging me or something comes up during the day that triggers me, I'll make a point to note it down. And then I'll set some time aside to really journal and work through it. And for me, that looks like listing my thoughts, looking for evidence that supports my thoughts. Cause I think, you know, um, kind of studying CBT and, and psychology right now, what I've realized is most of us have negative automatic thoughts that are, uh, often come from our core beliefs, as I mentioned earlier. So quite often we'll have these automatic thoughts and then we'll start looking for evidence that supports those automatic thoughts. And then we'll behave a certain way, which then obviously those behaviors have certain consequences. And then those consequences reinforce our, uh, our core beliefs. And then that cycle just continues. So, and, and it becomes a perpetual cycle. And unfortunately, it's hard to break through unless we put in the time and effort. Um, so one of the things with journaling I do is I not only look for evidence that supports my negative automatic thoughts or beliefs, but then I also look for evidence that um, kind of goes against those negative automatic thoughts. So if I feel like, oh, I'm being unproductive, I'll try to list all the evidence that uh, negates that belief. Well, no, I went to the gym or I read this book or I did this with my son. So it's important, um, for me, at least when I'm journaling, I list all those things down and then I set goals for myself. It's like, and, and by goals, I mean, starting small, I don't try to set large goals. It'll be like, okay, well, what am I going to do about this today? How am I going to snap out of this? So, with journaling, what ha- ha- helps is like, you know, you're using 
the other side of your brain and it's, it allows you to process things a lot better. And for me, it's been really beneficial in that sense. So something I would also uh, encourage uh, or suggest uh, for anyone who's interested. And then the last piece under mental health that's really helped me, uh, and I know a lot of people struggle with this, and this is by no means am I judging, um, but for me, reading reading books has been huge. And uh, I, I think there's tons of value because you often, when you're reading a book uh, and you come across something like uh, for me, I've been reading a lot of self-help or psychology books and you often get to learn the, the author's perspective on things. And that perspective might be different than yours, or it might even reinforce yours, your own perspective. But I think there's tons of value because you get to learn so much about how other people have dealt with similar situations or how other people perceive these things or, um, you know, so what it allows you to do is see different ways of handling uh, things that might be stressing you out or certain problems in your life. So that's where I truly get inspired when I'm reading. So I would, again, suggest trying it out. If reading is not something you have time for or it's not a priority or not something you want to do, uh, I would also suggest uh, listening to podcasts because those are relatively smaller in, in time commitment or even audiobooks. Um, I, if I know I've got a busy schedule and I won't have time to sit down and read a book, I typically go on Audible and download a book and then I'll listen to it when I'm walking to work or I'm at the gym. So there's other things you can do if reading's not your thing, uh, but try to push yourself to to learn different tools or skill sets or ideas around how to, you know, handle things that you might be struggling with. And um, th there's tons and tons of resources and information out there. So I would encourage you to, to go find it if you want. So that brings me to the end of the mental health piece. And then the last piece is spiritual health uh, for me. And, um, this is, I don't look at spiritual health as, as religion necessarily, but under spiritual health, um, I want to focus on three main things. That's your purpose, your values and beliefs, and finally your goals. And the reason why I think these are important is because once you've have an idea around your purpose and your goals and your beliefs and values, I believe you you feel more grounded. You feel like you have something to aim for. You know which direction you're going in. Um, I remember when at times when I didn't have a purpose or my purpose wasn't aligned with my values and beliefs, I often felt lost. I felt like I was walking around aimlessly and it wasn't a good feeling. I didn't feel content. I didn't feel whole. Uh, I felt like something was missing. It just didn't, I, I didn't feel in alignment with myself, if that makes any sense. But um, so, so yeah, expanding on these, I would say, you know, like try to identify your purpose. And typically, I think for most people, um, I think purpose entails like doing something that's bigger than yourself, you know, whether it's giving back to your community or helping other people or um, building something, whatever it is, uh, your purpose, I believe, is, is bigger than yourself. And that's where people feel in alignment. Once they've identified that purpose, now they know which direction they're going in. But not only that, I think, you know, when you're looking at identifying your purpose, try to see if it matches up with your values and your beliefs. Like, you know, what are the things that are most important to you? Like, what do you value? Do you value family? Do you value um, adventure? Do you value uh, quality time with friends? Like, identify that first and then see if your purpose lines up with that. You know, if, if you value family time, but if you're working 80 hours a week, then there's a disconnect. And you could see how 
that can cause some issues and, and how you may feel out of alignment because you're chasing something that you're not really valuing. So I would, I would highly recommend trying to do that exercise if you haven't already done. So try to look at what are the top four things you value in your life? Uh, what are your beliefs? And, and then see if that lines up with your purpose. And then once you've done that, once you have, uh, kind of identified your purpose, then you can start setting small goals. Uh, you know, whether your goals are daily goals, uh, weekly goals, monthly goals, annual goals, um, just try to set goals. And, and when you're setting goals, look at, try to understand if the specific goal you're setting, is that going to directly or indirectly allow you to achieve your purpose in the long term? And if the answer is no, then maybe really challenge yourself and be like, okay, is this a goal I want to take on right now? Or is this a goal I want to take on at all? So to start focusing on things that are in alignment with your purpose and that are allowing you to achieve your purpose. Because then when you start setting goals that um, are in line with your purpose, you also feel passionate about them. You feel, feel this sense of accomplishment when you do achieve them and then you're intrinsically motivated and i believe like we're able to um achieve things and and be able to focus on them and work towards them when we're intrinsically motivated it's huge so so yeah under spiritual health i would really focus on purpose our values and our goals that's how i look at it um people may look at it differently but I think there's a sense of um, contentment that comes, enlightenment uh, that comes when when we're able to have that sense of purpose and direction in our life uh, while maintaining humility and, and curiosity when we make mistakes, uh, when we fall short. Uh, take those as lessons and, and, you know, going back to the agreements with, that we have with ourselves, like be kind to yourself in how you speak and remind yourself that you're always doing your best. So, so this is what I wanted to share for this episode. Um, uh, again, I know not all of this may work for some people, but I really wanted to encourage this conversation, whether, you know, even if there are certain things that may work for you, you know, try to start thinking about them, try to see how you can build them into your life. And, um, and like I said, whether you're single or in a relationship, give these things to yourself because often, you know, people fall into this trap where they get complacent or they're waiting for their partner to do something for them and they keep waiting and then the resentment keeps building up and then things get toxic and, uh, but these are all things you can do for yourself. And, and when you're able to do this for yourself, you feel really good about yourself. You're, you're happy. You're more present. You're, you're enlightened and you're just a better version of yourself. And then, you know, if your partner is doing the same work, now you're coming together. You're both uh, happy people. You're not relying on each other for that happiness. You're able to give it to yourself. And then together you can create more memories, um, and, and also, you know, be able to have space for yourself and continue to grow as individual beings, but then also grow together as a couple. So anyways, I wanted to share this. Uh, like I said, I hope uh, you, you take something out of this. And uh, I also want to encourage a discussion or a conversation about this. So please feel free to uh, leave comments at the end or even... Uh, you know, hit me up on Instagram at, you know, as if, if you want to talk about this or, or uh, share your thoughts, I would love to hear from you. Um, so yeah, thank you again for tuning in. And uh, we'll be back again next week with our normal uh, episodes with with guests.